Hey guys, so today I'm going to do the um, Stanley Cup final preview between the Washington Capitals and the Golden Knights. I was going to do this video so much, like, longer ago. Like, so long ago, like a few days ago, but I didn't get around to it, so the final is starting in two days. So, I hope the camera's high enough, but, um, so yeah. I'm going to do it now. <laughs> and, yeah. So, of all, of all the potential Stanley Cup finals, this had to be among the most unlikely in 2018. I definitely agree, agree with that, because... I didn't really think, I expected Pittsburgh, if, if anything, hang on a second, let me just put this up a little bit more. I expected Pittsburgh, if anything, because I expected Pittsburgh to be in the finals for sure, you know, you know what I mean? Um, to see Washington beat them, it was amazing, so anyway. So, in one, <clears throat> in one corner you have the Washington Capitals, who though they have, though they've been one of the best NHL teams for the better part of the decade, part of a decade, we're supposed to be having a, a reset year. GM Brian McLennan's team was all in the past two years, but was forced by salary cap constraints to shed some experience and skill over the summer, which projected a thinner, weaker lineup. Head coach Barry Tross has been a lame duck coach all season and still doesn't have an extension. Despite all this, Caps won their third straight division title, defeated their nemesis in the Pittsburgh Penguins to reach their first conference final of the Alex Ovechkin era and are now in their first Stanley Cup final since 1998. I think the first in 20 years. I think if I know how to do math. In the other corner, we have a team that didn't even have a roster one year ago. The, the Vegas Golden Knights are writing one of the more improbable stories in NHL and in North, in North American sports history, drawing some comparisons to... Leicester City's Premier League Championship in 2015. When Vegas finally did pick its team last June, no one saw this kind of immediate success. Part of the expansion draft process was about accumulating assets and especially futures in the form of draft picks and prospects to set the team up for long-term st stability. And though they intended to build a competitive and exciting team right away, a Stanley Cup final this was out of the question, yet here we are. When I saw Vegas, I was like, like I, I don't even know what my first thought, thought thoughts were. I was kind of like, cool, like a new N NHL team. Because like you're so used to like the boring, same old NHL team. So it's like, ugh, but now you have a new one. It's like, great, but now I, oh, but now I hate them. Because we're in the finals. <clears throat> there are all sorts of great st storylines in this series. <clears throat> Sorry. Marc-Andre Fleury is having an, an historically excellent playoff run that could put him in a con smythe running, winning, a win or lose. The entire Golden Knights roster is made up of players cast from other teams. But those like Jonathan Marshall and Alex Tuck, or Tuch, Tuch, I don't know the fuck, whose former player who whose former teams paid Vegas extra assets to make sure <clears throat> they took them, have an even bigger chip on their shoulder and are coming through. Ovechkin, defined by some of his team's playoff failures, is now four wins away from a Stanley Cup. Important Im immorality import Immora immortality and has been a key, key performer for the Caps, scoring the series winning goal versus the Lightning. Trotz, after 15 years building a successful National Predators franchise from the ground up, is in his first cup final in his fourth year as Washington's bench boss. Both the GMs are from Guelph, Ontario and were teammates at Bowling Green University in the 1980s. <clears throat> Washington, which for years prided itself on an explosive offense, has m mostly found the success with a focus on team defense and the excellent net money from Braden Holpe. The Golden Knights are here because of their excellent forecheck, the quick looseness with which they play the game, and Fleury's outward, outworldly, otherworldly performance. Something's gotta give. Either either way, one's terrific story will come to a sad ending, and the other will write history. So now I'm moving on to the power numbers. So team, so Vegas, their offense is ranked is 5.21, ranked 16. Their defense is 5.61, which is 11th. And their power number is 5.41, which is 12th. Washington's offense is 5.62, 13th. Their defense is 3.56, which is 23rd. And their power number is 4.9, 1.59, 19th in the league. So now, advanced stats in the playoffs. So Vegas is, Vegas is 49.82, 5.15 CF percent, which is 8th. A nine, a 960, 515, I think the percentage, 960, 515 save percentage is first, 8.53, 515 shorthanded percent is third, Washington's is 50.345515 CF percent, I still don't know what CF is, that's seventh, 930, 515 save percentage, which is sixth, and 7.69515 shorthanded percent, which is eighth. Now moving on to the team stats, playoffs wise. Vegas is 17.6% on the power play, which is 10th. 
Their penalty kill is 82.5%, which is fourth. Um, they're a 2.87 goals for slash new games played, which is ninth. A 1.80 uh, goals allowed games played. G GP is games play played, I'm assuming, which is second. Washington is 29.8% on the power play, a lot better, which is second. Their pe penalty kill not so good. They're, se they're 75%. On the penalty kill, tenth, and then their <clears throat> GF slash GPP thing is thirty-two, is three point four four, which is second. Sorry, I'm like so tired, and I'm just so not used to doing these videos because I haven't done them in in like a week now. Um, so at second, their goals allowed slash games played, which is fifth, is two point six one. Their head-to-head -head record is is in Vegas's favor, of course, for Vegas reasons. Vegas is 2-0-0 against Washington, and Washington is 0-2-0 against Vegas. So both regulation lot losses for Washington. So now mo mo moving into the injury notes. So Vegas amazingly, the well, amazingly the Golden Knights haven't been been haven't been bitten too badly by the injury bug. The biggest loss so far has been the left winger William Carrier, or Carrier, I don't know, who who recorded three points in 37 regular season games and didn't have a point through the first two rounds. Carrier missed a game six against the Sharks and the entirety of the Winnipeg Jets series. He's skating again and could and could be available, though Vegas hasn't been hasn't missed a beat without him and could ride a winning lineup. David Perron missed two games of the Western Conference final, but that was due to illness and not injury. In the two games since he returned, his workload was slashed, but as he gets back to full health, those minutes should return to normal levels, as should his production. Vegas has been so lucky with injuries, mostly because they've gotten through to the final so fast. The Golden Knights haven't had a Game 7 yet, and only one of their three series have gone, be gone beyond Game 5. <clears throat> you have to have a healthy hockey team, and I think the biggest thing is we've won our series in 4 games, 6 games, and 5 games. We've had, we had a lot of rest between series to heal up some minor injuries, and our team is fresh. There's not, there's not too often you can say going into the Stanley Cup final that our, that our team is pretty fresh, and has very few minor injuries. Having time between series to get ready for the next one is a big part of having a chance to win. If injuries do hit, Vegas has some decent options to turn to. Thomas Tatar scored once in two games when he filled in for Perron, and if Carrier is healthy, either he would return or Ryan Reeves would stay on the fourth line for a physical prep presence. For Washington, when top six center Nicholas Backstrom was injured against Pittsburgh and had to miss game five, game six, it seems to set the Penguins up for a comeback. The Caps headed to Game 6 with a 3-2 series advantage, but it was the kind of situation they had been in and blown before. <clears throat> Without Backstrom, Washington was down one of its best players. The Caps went on to win that game and clinch the series, but Backstrom missed the first three games of the East Final with a hand injury as well. What appeared to be a death canal turned into nothing more than a minor inconvenience as the Capitals went 3-1 and one without the Swede. They lost the first two games after he returned against Tampa Bay, but in Game 6, Backstrom recovered record Backstrom in game six ba ba Backstrom record two primary assists to help lead the Caps to a 3 nothing win b b before plotting the empty netter in game seven. By the way, I'm going to go back to round, round three in the end. I'm just doing th things different now. The Capitals also missed 23-year-old Andre Burakovsky for most of the Columbus series and all of the P Pittsburgh series. Much was expected from Burakovsky this season after he notched 17 goals two years ago. <clears throat> but he played through a few injuries and, and was limited to 56 games, so he's become none of a third liner for for this team and was even a healthy scratch in Game 5 of the East Final. Prior to Game 7, he talked about how he struggled me mentally to stay on his game as he returned from injury, but he scored two huge goals in the Conference Final Series clincher, and you have to wonder if that inspires renewed confidence just in time for the Cup Final. Devontae smith pelly blocked a shot in Game 7 versus the Lightning, and did not return. After the game, Trotz seemed optimistic that the grinder would be good to go on Monday. So the series is going to start on Monday. Today's Saturday, by the way. And again, I don't know if I already mentioned this, but I'm in my sister's room. So yeah. So the top story for Vegas is simply that the Vegas Golden Knights are in the Stanley Cup Final. It is, of course, a reven, resin, rev is Something history for anyone to suggest this team was set up for instant success by team-friendly expansion draft rules because most projected Vegas to miss the playoffs in year one. Even owner Bill Foley, the, the most optimistic fan of them all, expected his team to make the playoffs in year three and challenge for the cup by year six. Now they're just four wins away from lifting it right away. We don't have high expectations for, for, for this year, Foley said back in August. We're going to be competitive. If we're going to lose a game, we'd like to lose by a goal or two. 
not lose by five or six. We don't want to be a walkover team. We want to be competitive. We want to be entertaining on the ice. We want to score some goals. That's definitely what's ha that's that, that that happened for sure. We have a lot. We have some really good players, but we're not deep like a lot of teams are in terms of four lines of forwards and two or three lines of defensemen. But we got some really good players in the expansion draft, so we just need to do well for a couple of years, then make the playoffs in, in three years as we start transitioning <clears throat> in some of these younger guys. Like Shea Th Theodore and Alex Tuke and Jake Vishoff will be pretty good in three years and we'll make a run in five or six. You, you've made a run in year one. That's it. The first year? Nope. I forgot about it. I'm making the playoffs now. I'm, I'm in the cup right now, bitch. <clears throat> the Golden Knights are a relentless team on the forecheck and that creates high quality chances on the offensive end. They are great at getting other teams out of position, creating havoc and buzzing all over with tremendous speed. Vegas brings that quickness and intensity across all four lines, but when it comes to scoring, they are far closer to being a one-line team. <clears throat> it's not shocking that Vegas is here, but incredible how easily they disposed of the Western Conference. They've lost just three games to, to this point and have shocked the hockey world and shaken it to the core. Same. The Golden Knights started the season as 500 one long shots to win their cup and now and are now so close to paying out huge to their early adopters. If they can win four more, the Golden Knights would compete, perhaps the would complete perhaps the greatest, most improbable season in NHL history. For Washington, the franchise has never won the Stanley Cup, but this is all about Ovechkin. Entering the NHL at the same time as Sidney Crosby, the Great Eight, has watched his rival win multiple cups and gold medals, while Ovechkin has set settled for individual awards and a terrific career that, that likely already has him Hall of Fame bound. But although he also sh always sh showed up in the postseason, he gained the reputation in some corners for not being a playoff player because his teams were not able to break through. It's, f it's fitting then that Ovechkin got this illiter iteration of the Caps to the final, an underlog group with lower expectations than almost any ca Caps team since they won their first of three President's Trophies in 2010. Ovechkin's 12 goals this postseason led the Caps to led the Caps, and he's the highest scoring player still alive in these playoffs. So Ovechkin has been a player, a playoff player the entire time, and is without, and is without a doubt the best player who hasn't, the best active player who has not won a Stanley Cup. This is his moment. Can't wait. We all can't wait. We're all excited. It's huge. Ovechkin told the Sportsnet in the Game Seven interview. It means everything to him, obviously. So Conn Smythe candidates for Vegas is one of Mark Andre Fleury. We're at the point now where even if Vegas loses in the Stanley Cup Final, it's a goalie could still win playoff MVP if he finishes strong and the series goes six or seven games. As good as Vegas' forecheck has been this season, <clears throat> it's hard to imagine the Golden Knights would have made as quick have would have made as quick work of their opponents as they have through three rounds without Fleury playing at the top of ball of his game. <sighs> Last year Fleury was thrust into the star starting job and Matt Murray sustained an injury prior to game one in round one and he helped carry the Penguins a few rounds before Murray returned, <clears throat> ending Fleury's time in Pittsburgh. His performance this season has not only dwarfed, dwarfed what he did last year, but Fleury has a chance to finish with the best playoff save percentage of any goalie to appear in, in at least 10 games since 1969. Fleury has a league best 947 save percentage to this point, facing an average of 33.6 shots per game. A few goalies have been over 940 in the past in the best salary cup era save percentage is Jonathan Quick's 946 save percentage from 2011-2012. But nobody with at least 10 games has finished the playoffs with a save percentage better than Fleury's 947 since Jacques, <clears throat> since Jacques Plante in 1968-1969 with the St. Louis Blues. Fleury also leads all goalies with four shutouts. It's unlikely he'll tie or break Martin Broder's record of seven. But with one more, Fleury would be just the sixth netminder in NHL history to record five sh shutouts in a Stanley Cup playoff run. The second is Jonathan Mar uh, Marsh or so. If anyone on the Golden Knights team laps, leaps Fleury, so something amazing needs to happen. But Marsh or so certainly appears capable of it. The Florida Panthers <clears throat> cast off leads the Golden Knights with eight goals and 18 points in 15 games and had three multi-point games against both the Jets and Sharks. Uh, and, and the third is William Carlson, the most, the most surprising breakout performer for Vegas. Carlson has continued his unfathom, unfathomably good season with 6 goals and 13 points in 15 games. His shooting percentage, which everyone expects to tumble next season, has started to come down in the playoffs, 23.4 to 13.6. But by averaging nearly 3 shots a game, he's still getting enough chances to be in good positions to score. It's a long shot that either... 
<coughs> a much so or Carlson will eclipse what, eclipse what Flurry has done, but both have shown game-breaking game potential that could shift the series and radically change the Consmith outlook. Now for Washington, one is Braden Holpe. When the Caps started their round one series against Columbus, Philip Grubauer was in net, usurping the number one job from Holpe, who struggled to his worst NHL season due to date. But after dropping the first two games of that series, Trotz went back to his ace, and Holpe has been lights out since. With a 9.25 save percentage, Holpe isn't having the best postseason of his career, but he's been up to the task when the Caps have needed him and closed out the high-scoring Lightning with back-to-back -back sh sh shutouts, which I will get to when I talk about the round, round three conference finals. In both the 2015 and 2016 playoffs, Holpe led the league in save percentage for all goalies with at least 10 games played, and both times he was over 940. In fact, Holpe has the third best postseason save percentage over the past four seasons combined at 9.30, behind, <clears throat> behind only Craig Anderson, 9.32, and you guessed it, Flurry 9.33. The second is Alex Ovechkin. He's got the second most points overall and most goals of anyone left standing, so Ovechkin is front and center for Smythe consideration among Caps players, skaters. If he does it, Ovechkin will need to loom large in the cup final with a few more goals, at key times, Ovechkin has goals in 10 of Washington's 19 playoff games and points in 14 of them. His whole career has led to the series, so expect him to be hungry and a difference maker. And the last one, 3, Evgeny Kuznetsov. <clears throat> if, if Ovechkin does have a hard time producing against the Golden Knights, the Capitals have another star Russian forward scoring and playing at a high level who is dangerous enough to take over a series. Kuznetsov is actually the points, 24, leader on the Caps and averages the most time on ice among their forwards, 21 minutes, 31 seconds. And for all the shots Ovechkin takes, Kuznetsov is neck and neck with him there too. Registering 70 sh 78 shots, Ovechkin has 80. Kuznetsov is also on a 10-game point streak, coming, into, coming, coming in hot to the final. The X factor for Vegas is going to be Flurry has been the team's backbone and the top line has driven the offense, but the Golden Knights need more offensive pop from their second line. For as, for as much as Vegas has been lauded as a four-line team, m most of the goals came from the top two lines all season. Only one player in the bottom six, Alex Tuk, Tuck, um, scored more than 11 goals and 30 points on the season. Tuck, a 22, or Tuk, whatever, a 22-year-old plucked from the Minnesota Wild, had two goals against the Jets and was second to only Marshall So in round three. Against a Washington team defense that has been stifling these playoffs, the Golden Knights will need to get um, offensive contributions from more than their, from more than just their top line, if only to lighten the load on Flurry. It would make life easier. <sighs> I'm talking too much. It would make life easier if line two with James Neal, David Prawn, and Eric Halla got going. But if it doesn't, Tuck Chuk could put together an unforgettable performance that helps the expansion team win it all. The 18th overall pick in the 2014 draft, Tuke or Tuck, like many, like every time I see Tuke, I, I, I just, it just, like every time I see his name, I, I just say Tuke. By the way, my hair is going to be bleached, not bleached. It's going to be dyed again soon. It's going to be back to blue. So yeah, like many on this team, hadn't been given much of a shot by his former team. It's happening now and on the NHL's biggest stage. For Washington, their X Factor, the, the Los Angeles Kings were supposed to be too big and tough for the Golden Knights and they were swept away. Literally. The Sharks were supposed to have more skill and be able to skate with Vegas, and they were dispatched in six. The Winnipeg Jets were supposed to be the complete package and lopsided favorites to get to the cup final, but Vegas delivered Winnipeg its first four-game losing streak of the season and eliminated them in five. While there was nothing obviously special or unique about this Capitals team, but they found a way here with not just terrific netminding, but a renewed focus on defense. Washington is allowing an average of just 28 point shots, 28.2 shots per game, against per game, and the, uh, the the second lowest rate in these playoffs after after Pittsburgh, and one of just three teams below 30. But Vegas will challenge this with how aggressively they attack their opponent and force them into mistakes. The Golden Knights don't take a ton of shots on net, but uh, but they tend to get more high quality chances, which is obviously important too. Can this Washington defense withstand the relentless Golden Knights, or if not, will Hopi be able to steal the cup? The Capitals have been beat, have beaten three tough offenses to get here, but they haven't seen, but they have not yet seen the kind of attack Vegas will throw their way. So that's the preview, and now I'm going to get into my prediction and like some more stats wise. <clears throat> so going back to round three. So for Vegas, round three, 
Um, they did not have home, home ice advantage. Win Winnipeg did. They played uh, Winnipeg in the second, third round. So game one was in Winnipeg, and Winnipeg was able to win this one 4-2. to two. After this game, I was not overly happy. I was like, yes, the Jets won one game. They showed they can win. Now if they win the next game, then, then they have a 2-0 series lead going to Washington, or Vegas. Let's do this. Nope. So they had a 1-0 series lead going into game two. After game two, Vegas obviously responds with a 3-1 th victory to tie the series at one going into Vegas. So then game three shifts to Vegas. I went up, uh, Vegas ends up winning 4-2. To take a 2-1 series lead, they, had, they end up winning game 4, 3-2 to, to take a 3-1 series lead, and at this point, I'm like, it's pretty much over, but you can't, it's not over till it's over, right? Toronto came back down 3-1 down against Boston to force a game 7, they lost game 7, but they still came back. Game 5, Winnipeg was not able to win, Vegas was able to win in Winnipeg 2-1 to, to end the series like that. So Winnipeg ended the season on a 4-game losing streak, their first 4-game losing streak in the playoffs. And <clears throat> they lost the series 4-1. Four, four to one. I, I was mind-fucked. I was like, what the fuck? How do you win one game? How, I did not expect them to leak. Like, when it was 1-1, one, one, I was like, okay. Or when it was one uh, nothing, I was like, okay, it's going to be 1-1. One, one. Then, then it, it'll be 2-2 two, two coming out of, out, of, out of Vegas. No. I, I don't like a pervert with this lighting. So goal scores. So Brandon McNabb gets one. Like, this is just in the third round. So Brandon McNabb gets one, a total of two in the playoffs. William Carlson has two with this series, six in total. Thomas Tatar scored his first of the playoffs. John John Jonathan Marcheseau has four goals this series, eight in total, and in two games where he had two goals in <clears throat> each game. James Neal, one goal, four in total. Alex Tuk, Tuck, two goals, six in total. Thomas Nozak and Ryan Reeves uh, got their first playoff goal this, this season. And then Riley Smith has one goal, two in, in total. So now going on to Washington for round three. So this series, I'm telling you right now, did, it did end up going seven. I was mind-fucked when I found out that Washington won. Now going through the series. So game one, t Tampa had home ice. Keep this in mind. So game one was in Tampa Bay. Washington won four to two. I was like, and keep in mind, they had a four nothing lead. They tried coming back, but they couldn't. So after it was four nothing, I was like, one nothing Washington. I was like, okay, d don't worry, Tampa won, will, will, will win game two. <laughs> no. Here, here comes game two, also in Tampa. 6-2, to two, Caps victory to take a 2 nothing series lead back to Washington. They have, have a chance to win the next two, and they have a chance to sweep the bolts. Do they? No. Um, t Tampa comes into Washington, wins both games, 3-4, and 4-2. Four, four Tie series just like that. They win 4-2 back, back to back games. They, are, they, are, they outscored the Caps eight to four in the two games and and the series is tied at two. When I saw this, I thought just like the caps and 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 the jackets. The jackets had a two nothing lead. Washington wins four four straight to win. That's what I thought of here. When it was tied two two, I was like I was like Tampa's gonna win the next two and then Tampa's gonna win in six. Mm-hmm. So game five comes along, Tampa does win and at, at home they were up to this point, all the away teams won. From games one to four, all the away teams won. And here it was broken. In game five, the, the, the Bolts had a three nothing lead. Tampa held on to take a three two series lead with a three two win, so it was th three two. They have a chance to win in Washington. Little did they know they would not score any more goals after game five. Want to know why? Because in game six, they they had a three nothing win. The Caps three three series, and I was like, you know what? Tampa's gonna win this game. It's it, it's a game seven. It's at home. It's a conference final. They're gonna win. Nope. They lose four nothing. That's what I mean. L little did they know they would not score any more after that third goal of the Tampa Bay game in Game Five. That's it. They had normal goals. So basically, Hopi has two consecutive shutouts, and Tampa has been shut out for two straight, and they're out now. So now goal scores: Michael Kempney got his first goal of the playoffs. Alex Ovechkin got four goals in this series, totaling 12 goals in this in the playoffs. Jay Beagle got one this series, which a total total of two. Lars Eller scored two this series, a total of five. Tom Wilson got one this series, a total of three. Devontae smith Pelly two goals this series, a total of four. Kuznetsov got four goals this series, a total of 11. Brian Connolly got two goals this series, a total of four. Dmitry Orlov got one goal in this series, a total of two. TJ Oshie, two goals, a total of seven. Andre Burakovsky, two goals, a total of two goals. And, and Nicholas Baxter, one goal and a total of one goal. 
So now moving on to the playoff records. So Vegas is 12 and 3, including 6 and 1 at home and 6 and 2 on the road. They're they're unbelievable either way. Like it's a home ice or no home ice. So you're fucked either way, bitch. For Washington, their playoff record is 12 and 7. They are 4 and 5 at home and then 8 and 2 on the road. This basically benefits both teams. Vegas has home ice in this series. They're 6 and 1 at home, but Washington is 8 and 2 on the road. That's exactly it. They have more. Vegas and Washington have the same amount of losses for, or no, because Vegas is 6 and 1 and then Washington is 8 and 2. So, <clears throat> Washington is 8 and 2 on the road. 8 of 2. 8, 8, and 2. They've won 8 of 10 on the road. That's amazing, okay? So basically it favors both teams. One is really good on the, on the road and they have and they're not and they don't have home home ice advantage. One team's really good at home and they have home home ice advantage. There you go. It's gonna be an amazing series, that's all I'm gonna say. So now going on to the schedule. So game one is gonna be in Vegas, May twenty eighth at eight PM. Game two is gonna be in Vegas, May thirtieth at eight PM. Game three is gonna shift to Washington. Game game three in Washington, June second at eight PM. Game 4 in Washington, June 4th at 8 p.m. Game 5 back in Vegas, June 7th at 8 p.m. Game 6 back in Washington, June 10th at 8 p.m. And then Game 7 is going to be, the potential Game 7 is going to be in Vegas on June 13th at 8 p.m. All start times are 8 p.m. Eastern Time. May 28th, May 30th, June 2nd, June 4th, June 7th, June 10th, and June 13th. It's going to be all the, all the days. So keep in mind that Hopi has two consecutive sh shutouts going into Vegas. I'm assuming it's gonna gonna be broken in, in game one. It should be broken in game one. This is amazing for Vegas. Like it's their first year and they're in the Stanley Cup Finals. That's amazing. Like how do you even? Like, that's so not even fair. I, that's not even fair at all. Like my team made it. Ottawa they made it to a two a game seven against Pittsburgh. They needed one goal to take out those fucking Penguins. But no, and then they fucking won the cup after. I was so fucking mad. But now Pittsburgh's out, so it's all good. But yeah, like, I, Ottawa was so close, and now freaking their first year, their first fucking year. And then the Leafs, freaking last year, they're freaking going in six. This year, out in fucking seven. This is bullshit. And then fucking Vegas. Oh, yeah, you know, I'm gonna freaking play in the... Ow, fucking bitch. They play their first fucking year, and then here, here they are. Here they are. Whatever. So yeah, keep, keep in mind that... Vegas is really good at home, and that Washington's really good on the road. And keep in mind also that Washington has two consecutive shutouts. Well, hope he does. One on the road, one at home. And the series is going to start in two days. Today's the 26th. It starts all on the 28th of May in Vegas. I'm actually pumped for this. Like I'm not. I'm not. I'm used to hockey not being on for the for like a few days now. So like I'm not. Uh, I'm used to it. So I I really hope this series goes seven games. To be honest, whoever wins this series, I hope they win it at home. Like, I even tell my friends, it sucks winning on the road. Because, like, everyone, it's obviously amazing because you win the cup. That's just, that's common sense. You win the cup, you're fucking ha happy, no shit. The, the thing with me is, you win on the road, you're fucking fr freaking out. You look around, the stadium's de dead silent. That's it, just dead silence. You're just like, yay, and then uh, uh, everyone's like, at home, everyone's like, yo, bitch, the Gohorn's on for like 20 minutes. Everyone's flipping their shit. Everyone likes like fireworks or some shit. Everyone's like flipping out. It's amazing. Like, it's so amazing. Like, when uh, LA won in the over overtime winner, that stadium was lit. When Chicago won at home, a 2 nothing win against Tam Tampa Bay in the finals, the, the stadium went insane. Like, if they were fucking happy. You know what I mean? Like, it's amazing winning on the road, and I can only imagine how Vegas would be if they won the, 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 the Stanley Cup. In a way, I want, I, I do not like Washington at all. I hate the Capitals, I hate the Capitals, I hate the Capitals. I'm not saying this because I hate Washington. I'm saying I feel like Vegas is gonna win for Vegas reasons, as one YouTuber says that I watch, called The Honky Guy, go check out his channel. He does previews like I do. Um, I, I just think Vegas has this series. And how many games? I have no fucking idea. No idea. I'm assuming it'll go five or six for sure. Like, how does it not go five or six? It's not going to be a sweep. It can't be a sweep. It cannot be a sweep. If anything, I expect the series to go six or seven. Preferably seven. Why? You get to see more hockey. Because then, if, if it goes to a game seven, the last game I'm, I'm going to see is June 13th. But if it ends, if it's a sweep, then the last game I'm, I'm going to see is June 4th. M maybe Washington will shock me. Maybe Vegas, maybe Washington will sweep them. That's not going to happen. 
Uh, maybe Washington will, will, will win in four, five, six, seven. Maybe uh, Vegas will win in four. I don't know. Like, I literally don't know. I literally don't know. All I'm going to say is Vegas in six. I'm just going to say Vegas in six. That's going to be my final prediction. This series preview has been so fucking long, 30 minutes now. So I'm going to shut the fuck up because no one wants to hear my fucking voice. So it's going to be an amazing series. I hope you guys like this series as, as, much, I'm, as much as I'm going to. I will do a, a, a thingy after the whole series and say, oh my gosh, so this team won the game. I'm shocked. I'm not shocked. I'm not going to be shocked if Vegas wins. I'm not. Like, at this point, I'm not. If you told me in September, uh, Vegas is going to win the cup this year, I'd be like, are you, are you fucking dumb? Like, are you dumb or are you dumb? At this point, not shocked. I've seen how they played. They're fucking amazing. They're going to win the cup. They should win the cup. That's all I'm going to say. So, sorry that this video was uploaded so late. Sorry, it's a fucking long-ass preview. And I will see you guys after the series, and hopefully... And none of these teams win. That's not going to happen, but I don't want any, any of these team teams to win. Because freaking Vegas took a Winnipeg in five. That's so disappointing. And then fucking Washington, I hate them too. I'm going to shut the fuck up. Okay, I hope you guys like this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.